Missable content in video games is downright infuriating. We've all been there, checking up on a game to realise that there were storylines and useful items that, because you had no idea they were there, you breezed past and can never return to them. Characters tend to be a harder thing to miss. After all, weapons and items can be dime a dozen, really, but entire people, developers tend to make it so you can't avoid making alliances with them, or you can at least seek them out later. There are exceptions, however. I'm CypherWhatCulture.com and these are 10 missable video game characters that cost you 100%. Number 10. Zevran, Dragon Age Origins Dragon Age is all about player choice, and the problem with choice is that you can't have it all. Players of Dragon Age 2 will be acutely aware that it's possible to lose every playable character except Varric along their journey, and similar can be said for Origins. Not only will party members leave if you anger them too much with your decisions, they'll also take the equipment you gave them with them. Zevran gets a particular nod here because unlike previously welcomed squad mates, it's very possible and all too easy to never even get him into your ranks in the first place. The character first appears as an assassin who is hired to ambush and kill the player, but upon being defeated, he's knocked unconscious. The game asks the player if they want to wake him for questioning, but Zevran doesn't have any valuable information anyway. The other option is to kill him whilst he's unable to defend himself, and so most players will get their revenge and forget all about Zevran. However, in doing so, they've accidentally killed a party member without even knowing it. It's a frustrating realisation to find out you've missed out on Zevran's carefree and snarky attitude by opting to kill a man who at that point in the game seemed like nothing more than a mini-boss. Number 9. Magus. Chrono Trigger Dialogue choices in video games can often be deceiving. Sometimes they exist for a purpose and your selections count for something, but sometimes they subvert and loop around forever until the player picks the right option. Following some major events in Chrono Trigger, the player's time-travelling party of heroes encounter antagonist Magus and seem prime for a face-off. They're then asked if they want to fight him or not. Considering that Magus's battle music is already playing, it very much gives the air of either being an illusion of choice, or at the very least expects the player to select the affirmative. And with that pumped-up jam behind the moment, players ready themselves for battle. Except if they choose to face Magus, they lose the opportunity to have him join the party. Instead, choosing to walk away inspires the former villain to join the group and combine forces to take down the game's true big bads. Magus' addition to One's crew has major storyline impacts, as well as the scythe-wielding magician being amongst the most versatile characters in battle. The Nintendo DS port included a bestiary for the game, and Magus' entry can only be gained if you killed him in battle, meaning that for this port, you'll have to make both choices to fully 100% the title. Number 8. DLC Characters – Marvel Ultimate Alliance 2 When it comes to optional characters, the digital storefront is also a potential source of frustration. Forget missing unlockables was about permanently missing DLC. Activision had the rights to the Marvel catalogue of costume capers for a long time, producing video games based on the X-Men films and a plethora of Spider-Man offerings. They also released the surprisingly fun Ultimate Alliance game series that featured a roster of heroes and villains from a top-down perspective. Pick all of your favourite characters and kick some butt, unless Black Panther and Carnage are your favourites. Now that Marvel is owned by the somewhat video game adverse Disney, the contracts for both Marvel Ultimate Alliance 1 and 2 have become a bit troublesome, it seems. Whilst the series had a third helping in 2019, the first two games in the series remain absent from Xbox Live and PlayStation stores. At least you can still play the games if you have them already installed or own physical copies, but things get sticky when it comes to the later release DLC. If you don't already have the character pack, which includes classics like Magneto, Black Panther, Carnage, Psylocke and Cable, then you've completely missed your chance. Suddenly it doesn't feel so much like an ultimate alliance when you know there are characters out there in the void unable to be purchased ever again. Number 7. Gold Dragon Ash – Viva Piñata from the outside, Viva Piñata seems like a cutesy, child-friendly game that is all bright visuals and chill vibes. Those who have played it, however, will know that the game is a nightmare of conflicts, a spreadsheet of forward planning, and one of Rare's most overlooked offerings. Part of the full experience is making each piñata type a resident of your garden, as well as chronicling different coloured variants. Oh, and each piñata has a ridiculous pun name based on food, so the ultimate species in the first game is the Dragon Ash, Dragon plus Ganache, equals brilliant. However, the colour of this one-time piñata is determined by where the egg hatches, and players will discover that they missed out on their chance for the shiniest dragon ash dozens of hours ago. When players begin the game, their square of land is a mess of detritus and unusable ground. The game then gives them a shovel and expressly tells them to clear dry soil away with it. 
It's the first job of every would-be piñata gardener to clear things up and make your area hospitable by flattening the ground, adding fresh soil and grass, and beginning the process of enticing worm and bird piñatas that eventually lead to bigger and more interesting creatures. It will, in this case, mean that you'll never get the gold dragon ash as it must hatch on dry soil. Isn't gardening meant to be relaxing? Number 6. Dog. Arcanum of Streamworks and Magic Obscura. One of the main cruxes of 2001 fantasy role-playing game Arcanum is exploring the world and enlisting the assistance of followers. In a strikingly weird situation, the kind of which only video games allow us to actively participate in, one of the best followers in the game is Dog. When arriving at Ashbury, the game has an internal clock that starts to count down 60 minutes. During that time, a rather cruel gnome down an alleyway besides the town's tavern begins kicking a poor pooch. If the player doesn't come across this in that hour, they'll miss out on the dog forever. This is all too easy to do, as Ashbury is one of the largest locations in the game, with plenty to distract would-be adventurers. However, if the player does intervene, they can buy the dog or scare the gnome away, and the creature will become a follower. Known also as the Worthless Mutt, it's anything but. Being a solid melee attacker that, unlike the other soldiers who join you, doesn't need any equipment to succeed in battle. It's worth doing this just to save the poor pixelated pooch from a miserable fate, but if you spend too long gallivanting around town, well, maybe best not to think about it. Number 5. My Shiranui, Dead or Alive 5, Last Round. Fighting games tend to not have missable characters simply because they're the bread and butter of the entire experience. However, with the onset of DLC fighters and exacerbated by the contract negotiations of guest appearances, there are some notable exceptions. Dead or Alive 5 landed in 2012, but then was followed, as is the way of some fighting games, with expanded re-releases. Last round featured updated graphics, new costumes, and new characters. A mainstay of SNK's Fatal Fury and King of Fighters franchises, Mai was a guest fighter that made her way into the Dead or Alive series to much applause from the fighting game community. This began with Dead or Alive 5 Last Round, where Mai was added to the game as post-launch content in 2016. However, several years later, she found herself delisted from stores in 2019. The reason behind this? Team Ninja wanted all eyes on Dead or Alive 6. Mai does appear in this sequel, but it seems pretty unfair to delete the DLC for the previous game, removing the opportunity for latecomers to the franchise to complete DOA 5's character selection screen. To make things worse, DOA 6 was received pretty poorly, and most fans just stuck with the previous game anyway. Number 4. Kai, Harvest Moon 64. When it comes to life sim games like Harvest Moon, you want a no-fuss experience with as little stress as possible. Tell that to the handful of villagers in Harvest Moon 64 that, if not befriended before a certain period, will leave town and move on with their lives. Whilst it's not always clear who might be capable of turning their back on the village, it can be important to make sure to keep tabs on certain faces if you're gunning for that 100%. One of the completion aspects for a Harvest Moon experience is the recipe book. Considering that wine enthusiast Kai has itchy feet and is one of the few characters capable of leaving town. It's not a great combination that he also happens to have the recipe for very berry wine. Kai is a bit of a strange one though. You can befriend him as much as you like, but he still might leave for pastures new. It's all down to how you treat not him, but instead Karen, Kai's love interest, who works in the vineyard. It's a strange twist on the usual formula, and one that is easy to mess up if you don't know about it beforehand. Keeping Kai and Karen around opens up a potential marriage between the two, and most importantly for the player, access to the very berry wine recipe. Number 3. Shadow Final Fantasy VI Throughout Final Fantasy VI, the player can bump into, interact with, and be joined by Shadow. This dark, mysterious ninja plays by his own rules and comes and goes as he pleases, but his contributions to the strength of your party are definitely felt. As the plot progresses and antagonist Kefka prepares to tear apart the world, players find themselves on the floating continent and paralysed by the evil clown's magic. At that moment, Shadow swoops in and saves the party, telling them to make a run for it. However, before jumping off the continent to their airship below, players can make the choice between jump and wait. As the timer ticks down, the music swells and the screen shakes, nervous players will jump for safety. Ultimately, if the player doesn't wait, Shadow will never be seen again. Not only is Shadow one of the most beloved characters in the game, missing him from the final showdown seems wrong. FF6 has a bigger cast than many titles in the series, but it's not so massive that it becomes expected to only have so many characters by the finale. Shadow, if you fail to wait for him, is memorably missing from the end of the game, because you fought alongside him so many times before. 
Number two, Entei and Raikou, Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green. Legendary Pokemon, especially in the earlier titles, were a one chance kind of situation. No matter which you've encountered, there's only one in the game, so you must remember to save before you fight. However, Fire Red and Leaf Green, the 2004 remakes of the original games, had a rather unfortunate situation when it came to two late game legendaries. Making their way over from Gold and Silver are the legendary Dog Trio, and players will encounter one roaming across the map after a certain point in the story. Story. Which one they find goes back to their first choice, as it depends on your starter Pokemon. However, Raikou and Entai prove to be more than just challenging battles. They both have the potential to use the move Raw, which, in a wild battle setting, allows the Pokemon to escape. Unfortunately, the code of the game reads this as the legendary fainting, and they're completely removed from the game. Because it's harder to save Scrub with them because they're roaming the region and can show up at any time, Entei and Raikou become some of the most terrifying encounters a player can face in Final red and leaf green. Hard to catch them all when they vanished into the ether. Number 1. The Demogorgon, Dead by Daylight In 2016, the asymmetrical horror multiplayer title Dead by Daylight graced gaming with its presence. In the very same year, the Duther Brothers world-famous nostalgic horror fantasy show Stranger Things released its first season. The collision course began. As part of the 13th chapter of DLC, Stranger Things joined both Dead by Daylight originals and horror classics such as Michael Myers, Ghostface and Freddy Krueger. Steve Harrington and Nancy Wheeler from the show were added as survivors, but the star of the package was the Demogorgon, the game's latest killer, who could teleport around the map by travelling through the Upside Down. However, just two years after being released, the Stranger Things chapter was removed from storefronts. The reason being that Netflix, who owned the rights to the IP, were looking into their own avenue for gaming using the mobile version of the Netflix app and decided to cut ties with their existing partners. This meant the removal of Stranger Things 3 The Game from the App Store, as well as Chapter 13 of Dead by Daylight. Whilst the characters still exist in games for those that redeemed them earlier, they are no longer purchasable, meaning that those that missed out will forever have an incomplete selection of survivors and killers. For the completionists out there, it's frustrating being killed by the Demogorgon knowing that you, yourself, will never be able to wield those otherworldly upside downy powers. And that's the list! Let us know what you thought of this video down in the comments below, and which of these characters did you miss out on? Of course, let us know of any that we missed as well. Make sure you like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe and hit that notification bell. I've been Cypher Culture, and have a good week.